So some time ago we talked about Wonder Animation, the beautiful tool from the folks at Autodesk and this was something that a lot of you guys really wanted to see how it works prior to you know committing or even trying this out. And so this video is going to be all about that, all the necessary things you need to know about it and there are some things that I will definitely say out of the gate do not expect too much because this is still in extreme beta so a lot of things are yet to come. But for what it's worth, this is quite interesting to see and how this one works is very easy. So first up, you need to actually have a subscription to be able to try this one out. Once you've got your subscription, next thing is to create a new project. And once you click on create a new project, you would notice that we have the animation slash video to 3D scene at the end of the stack. We're simply going to click on continue to proceed with that. In this case, we do have a small shout, a huge shout out to Kamrul, one of our students at the University of Surrey. And of course, a huge shout out to Hisam, the cinematographer. How you get to work with it is really simple. You need a clip that have the subjects in view. You do have two subjects and I think this should be able to support up to four characters in your scene, but we just want to play safe and leave it at two. I'm going to click and drag that to upload this clip into Wonder Studio. And once we have that, we can now click on next. And this is going to bring us to a place where we can select the actors. And with this, we're just simply going to click for this to be able to scan the entire frame for actors. And once this happens, select any of the human subjects in your frame and assign a character to them. The very next thing that you need to do is pretty simple. You know, just click on next and this is going to process. And uh, one major thing I think we need to clarify is this does not in any shape or form create any background that is related to the scene that you've uploaded. I mean, this is something we need to really clarify because there is a, a bit of a conversation about that one. So if you do have a scene, you need to convert that scene to a USD scene and then upload the that scene. Even that option is not available at this point and it is also something that I think will be coming very soon. However, there is a city street scene which you can work with. So what we need to do is just simply select the city street scene, click on next and you can specify what and what you would like to get once this is done processing. So in this case, you know, if you like to get a blender scene, an Unreal Engine scene, a Maya scene, or possibly you just want to get the USD scene, maybe you want to use this in other tools like maybe Houdini, Nvidia Omniverse or any other tool that supports USD, you can also export that. So we are going to simply select the necessary ones that we want click on start processing and boy oh boy this takes hours like I felt it was going to be like minutes but no way this takes hours to process and once you've got this processed you can now proceed to download these and explore them in your preferred DCC app of choice and that is where we get to talk about some things that actually comes with it once you download the file and in our case what we've done is download the blender file the Maya file, the Unreal Engine file, and of course the textures. Now you'd also notice that because we're downloading both the streets and also the scenes, that these are two different things that are actually downloading. And once you've got this downloaded, you can simply go ahead and extract it. And to each of these folders, you do have unique files that are related to the specific file itself that you want. So if I double click in here, what we have is the city streets with textures for Blender. And the same thing is also applicable to what you've got for Maya as well. But the way these apps respond to these are totally different. Like, it is just totally different how they respond. First off, let's try out with Blender. So we did open the city street scene in Blender. And this is what you get. You get the entire city. So you can literally just download this one, pick it up, you know, tear it apart if you want. There's a lot of cool things around. It is quite detailed for a simple city street. And I think they did put into consideration a lot of things. So the next thing that we get to open is the scene. And if we simply pop up the scene, this is what we get. We get the character and you get a fully rigged model. And you can also see how much hair fibers and you know all of that detail that we want. We can press the playback to see the animation. Of course, this is going to be extremely slow because there's a whole lot of things running in the background. And with this, you can now simply select the object, go over to where you have your properties and play with shape keys if you want. And you can also manipulate this if you want. But something is a little bit amiss here and that deals with the other section that the camera doesn't see. Because if we're taking a look at what the camera sees, it looks cool, but you know, typical Hollywood style stuff. The parts that the camera don't see can be as messed up as possible. But you'd also notice that the object is far off from where we would consider origin of the scene, which is somewhere right here. And the same thing can also be said for Maya. However, Maya has a whole different story altogether. If you're just opening up the scene, this is what you'll be getting. You know, something pretty cool, something pretty useful. The whole scene looks really, really nice. And of course, the textures to the scenes, they do come differently. So you can go ahead and download them. And um, yeah, this looks good. But where the problem is, 
is when you try to import the characters as that is where you, you get to meet a little bit of a roadblock. So Maya works in this very beautiful way, which is called referencing. And for those who have no idea, what this means is you can make a solidly detailed model on one machine and reference that model on another machine and work with it. And that seems to be the situation when you try to import the scene inside of Maya, because this is definitely going to tell you that it's looking for the reference and you have to find that reference. In this case, you have to go ahead and dig through the entire output folder. So we go into the USD and inside of USD, we have to go into assets and inside of assets, we go into characters. We've got Wonder Studio Nick and Wonder Studio Maria. So if we open up Wonder Studio Nick, we have to dive in and you notice that we've got the USDA, the USDC, and we have the .ma, which is Maya ASCII file alongside some JSON files. And that is the references that we need. And once you've got this working, you would also notice that there is potentially a bigger problem, which is some stretching on the model. And that is also something that we don't want. So how you get to rectify this, if you're working with Maya, the easiest way to get your model looking really cool and everything looking fine without doing the whole referencing thing is this easy. Once you open up Maya, go over to file, go all the way to set project and find the workspace. So the workspace folder, in this case, it's our output full scene files for Maya. That is the one we need to select. And once we have that selected and we go over to scene, click and drag the wonder dynamic scene right inside of Maya, everything works like charm. And that is something that is pretty interesting. And for those who work with Maya, that is something that you should keep in mind. And for Unreal Engine, all you need to do is fire up the Wonder Studio project and this would open up in Unreal Engine. Now, once you open this up, a few things to keep in mind is first off, you're going to be getting the cameras, characters, pythons, shared, and also shots. Within the shot is where all the shots that you'll be working with exist. You can definitely open up the main level. Once you'll be having, once you open up the main level is Wonder Dynamics Nick and Wonder Dynamics Maria. So we can simply press F on the keyboard to zoom right in and we're going to throw in a bit of light just to see what we're dealing with. And in this case, what we're going to throw in is a simple directional light and we're also going to go ahead and throw a simple HDRI. I think the HDRI will be good. So we can have that, drag that all the way down about a point like that. For the directional light, if we hit Ctrl and L on the keyboard and with our mouse movement, we can just change the direction. And I think this might be something that we would want. Maybe something like that doesn't look bad. I kind of think that the brightness is too much. Once we have this, you can tell that we've got both characters in place. At this point, you may be tempted to move these things around. And of course, yes, you can. So you can move this if you want. But the major thing that I think that you might want to really see is the animation that you've already exported. And so to see that, what you need to do is to double click on the main sequence. And if you click on this tiny button, you can now look through the camera. And then from here, we can press the playback button or, you know, hit spacebar and start previewing it. And in this case, you can now have your animation working. Of course, if you make changes as well to the directional light right here, this also affects it. So you can, you know, have your stuff happening in real time, make those changes if you want. And this is for those who would want to work with Unreal Engine. More so, you can explore other stuff with this tool. So if you go over to the Wonder Studio Nick, you can take a look at the blueprint if you want. You can also take a look at the skeletal mesh and also see the animation themselves. So we can double click on that and you can see the animation. We can go through it. You know, preview this animation if we want, see what and what we can do with that, if this is something that interests us. And for those who are also thinking about what if you would want to, you know, make modifications, those modifications would happen if you throw in a control rig. And this is where my plea would come. Hopefully in subsequent updates, just like we have with Blender, it would be nice to see some form of control rig that will come over to tools like Maya and possibly some other control rigs that might come with tools like Unreal Engine. That will be a lifesaver and I believe a lot of people would want to see that happen. Another thing I think a lot of people will want to see happen is me playing these back in Maya. We've seen this play back in Blender, Unreal Engine, but not Maya. And the reason is because this doesn't play back as you expect. Because if we simply bounce this all the way back and press the playback button, this is what we get. The character is just Hey, why are crazy the way it animates? I kind of think that this is something that is fundamentally wrong with the root of this character's joint as this other one is pretty cool. Like when we move this, you can see that quick snapping backward, forward, backward, forward. And I think it has to do with the root of the joint. And that is something I would love to see being fixed. But other than that, the folks at Wonder Studio have created an amazing looking system, which allows anyone to make a video, export that video out, 
as animation and other properties that might be used for creating a wonderful animated piece. And yes, it is also worth mentioning that this tool is far from complete, but for what it is, it is going to make sense to take some of these things that I've mentioned into consideration and make this better. And at this point, the question of how this compares with other tools that they've made before is actually something that we may have to have in the comment section. And this seems to be a gigantic package of everything put together. But once this becomes a final product that allow you work with environment and allow you edit your animations quickly and faster with some set of control rigs, this is definitely going to help a whole lot of artists. And something else that will help a lot of artists are the folks at Humble Bundle as they've released a ton of bundles that deals with assets, tutorials, and also learning resources that artists will definitely want to work with. So whether you work with Unreal Engine, Unity, or Godot, you'll be able to take advantage of the Super Game Asset Bundle that comes with over 7,000 assets and these are crazy stuff so if you're thinking about getting these ones you can simply go ahead and check it out and speaking about courses that you might want to explore if you're trying to learn how to make stylized environments vfx or you're thinking about getting started in creating cgi films inside of unreal engine then this interesting concept art in unreal engine course is also something that you will definitely love. And for Blender users, the Ultimate 3D Sculpt and Character Mastery Bundle from the folks at Flip Normals is currently available and you may want to consider checking these ones out. All of these are going for a massive steal as the base price versus the amount you get to pay are totally far off. So in case you like to get this and possibly you want to get started learning and exploring stuff for yourself, then links to all of this alongside links to the folks at Wonder Studio is gonna be in the description, so do well to check it out. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section and until I see you guys in the next one, peace.